I'm so happy that I put on the recorder on this one. I missed a few minutes, but it I really enjoyed this one. So what I did is I just slapped down some paint, um, the yellow, the green, the red, at the top, the bottom, um, and then I went with black in the center. Didn't know what I was going to do, dried it. Then I went with one of my floral stencils. I love this. Sorry, not stencils, stamp. And with the stamp, I went in four of them across diagonal. I love diagonal lines. Then I dried it completely. At this point, I didn't know what to do. What am I going to do with the black in the center and all this brilliant color on either end? <clears throat> and then I thought, hey, why don't I drip? I love drips. And whenever I'm in doubt of a negative space, I just create drips. And so that's what I did at the bottom. I really love the contrast. Look at that contrast. So I figured if I did that at the bottom, well, maybe I can do that at the top. What do you think? So I'm thinking, thinking, and I ended up putting some more of that paint. So it's black acrylic paint, but I added a little water to it. So it is thinner. And when I tilt the book, it drips. Now at this point, um, camera was off for a while. A couple days went by put it back on and I already started to go in with my gel pen on the drips. I love, I just love the contrast that the white gel pen is giving against the black. We have the stock black, but then we put these lines. I love doing repeated line, repeated dots, repeated pattern of any kind. And so you have these leggy drips, which then become like roots, vines, very, it's very organic and there's lots of movement to it. And so I just go through the whole thing, making these lines. First, I started off with a straight line, horizontal cross. Then I started to curve them and in curving them, they give a, a dimension. It gives a dimension of almost like a rope, a rope effect. And so each one was giving me that feel and I just continued throughout um, the piece showing this dimension at the top at the bottom. I'm thinking maybe just a few areas I would do, but maybe not, <laughs> you know? So I'm thinking, okay, what else? Let me start doodling on the leaves, the, flo the florals and see what happens, you know? Maybe pull out some more lines, um, highlight some of those whites. I didn't know what I was doing. So I just wanted to just freely explore that until I felt, okay, I know what I'm doing. So I just wanted to put some more detail in the flowers, just see where it was going and keep doodling. And that's what I love about these. You can just keep going and going, not taking yourself serious. Please do not. You know, as you see, I'm stopping and I'm going, I'm stopping and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, what else, what should I do? So then I get the brilliant idea to continue those roots, those trees, those leggy vertical lines that I've been doing into the black area, coming straight through that's connecting the top and the bottom to the florals. In fact, you know, I'm calling them roots. They're beginning to look more like trees and they're beginning to look almost like birch trees, thin, lanky, um, organic. Some of them were straight and then I decided to curve them, um, just really taking it into that black area. But the negative space through the black would still give you that heavy contrast of the black. And then you get that mid-tone kind of effect where the black and the white meet together with the patterns, the repeated pattern. And that's why I love repeated pattern. I mean, it really does shift dimension in the piece. And so at this point, now I've decided, ooh, I love this idea. Let's just go to town with it. So I know what I'm doing at this point. There's no more stopping, thinking, shifting the, the, the book, the journal, because I know I like where it's going and I want to continue it. And so I'm just taking it through making those little short marks. You notice I'm not drawing the shape, but I'm creating the shape with the repeated lines, with those curved little lines, just going up, 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 or down, 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 connecting the two halves. 
um, and the florals in the middle. So I'm really enjoying this. Um, I love where it's going. At this point, you know, when you know what you're doing, it becomes very therapeutic. And I'm excited about where it's going and what's happening. I'm very close to the end now. I feel like really satisfied with it. Um, I'm thinking at this point, as I'm finishing up those lines, what else can I do? Maybe pop some more of the whites um, in the floral. Maybe pop some more of the color. Um, the color was done with acrylic paint, but... I now have my trusty, trusty Posca pens, paint pens. So I will just go in to get a little more um, highlights there. This paint pen I have, it's a thick one. And I think it might be running out of paint, but it just gives me a kind of a grayish effect. So I didn't really bother with it. And I've decided I yeah, I don't want to pop, pop those whites very much. So I, I go in with some of my Posca pens that are color. So I'm doing the red hair, just popping some of those areas, not changing it up, just kind of extending them in some parts, um, making sure it's balanced on both sides, going back in with the white jelly pen and just going back and forth, really liking where it is, knowing that it's coming to an end. You know, you can just always sense that, that I'm resolving it and it's reaching a point where it's being resolved. And that's a lovely thing. And, you know, I treat these, these are it's paintings like I would be painting on a canvas or paper or board, but it's in the journal. And in the journal is where the magic happens because you're really not taking yourself as seriously. I still think about things. I think about composition. I think about balance. I think about contrast. All the things I think about on the painting. But it's just not as stressful. And... That's the key. And I will always encourage people to have journals, to have sketchbooks, and work out compositional ideas there. Work out color, color combinations there. Play, play, play. Don't overthink. <laughs> I'm going in with the orange here, highlighting some of the orange areas. You know, I'm not really changing any of the colors. I'm just highlighting. And I've decided to kind of carry some pops of those colors on either side into the florals. Not that I wanna color the florals at all, I don't. Just little pops. You know, I always think it's important to echo certain things, to repeat a line, a shape, a color, even just a little bit. It helps with balance. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm not really trying to color in the florals. And I'm really happy with it. I love what's happened. And I just, I love it. I would love to hear what you think about this. And um, I was intrigued. I, I really enjoy when I start something having no idea where it's going. And then it just happens and pulls together. And that's, I, get, I encourage you to do that. Don't always feel like you need to know where it's going. Start. Start and one line will inform the other. One shape will inform the other. One color will inform the adjacent color. And it just keeps going like that. And that's where the magic happens.